Hello and welcome. I wanted to talk today a little bit about shamanism and storytelling. And where I'd like to start is a story. When I was a kid, I spent some time um, during recess all the way in the back corner of the playground. There, I actually had um, a whole magic land set up with some of my closest friends. We had created a whole story and myths and characters and creatures. And so every day during our lunchtime, we would go over there and, and play and learn and explore and create. And I don't remember a lot of the characters and the development of the story, but what I do remember is um, our lion. We had this lion that was magical and some sort of spirit being that would hang out and teach us and, um, and we would interact with. And then over the, over the, over the school year, um, you know, we added to the story and then eventually we kind of faded away from that. And I remember going home and writing some of our stories that we would create when we were there on the playground. And then it faded and I'm not really sure whatever happened to it. We kind of just left it there and never really created an ending or did anything with that whole story and scene that we've been creating over the course of the school year. During some journey work recently, um, I was seeking some information and teaching about um, where I might be holding myself back and what that might look like. And if you have experience with journey work, then you know that oftentimes spirit speaks to us in messages and might show us um, images and um, symbols to help us gain deeper understanding. And during that journey, um, I was brought back to that magical place way back in the corner of the playground. I didn't think a lot of it at the time during the journey, but later upon reflection, I, I remembered that lion. I remembered that lion being back there. And I was suddenly attuned to the fact that actually we had left that lion kind of caged up back there in the corner. And when I sat with it, I realized that lion was still pacing in me back and forth, anxious, nervous. And I thought, wow, maybe, maybe it's time to let it out. What, what should I do here? And then I noticed in my awareness, this moment of fear, like, I don't know, should I let it out? It's a lion, it could be dangerous. Um, what would happen if I let it loose on the playground? Would it scare other kids? Would it bite other kids? Um, you know, would the other kids attack the lion? Nonetheless, I decided, okay, maybe it's time. It's feeling like it's time. Let me go ahead and let it out. And so I did. And then what happened is actually, the lion just wanted to play. The lion just wanted to play and, and everybody wanted to play with it too. It turns out that they couldn't wait for the lion to come out too. It'd been back there in the corner this whole time pacing and creating. And, um, and so all of this energy had gone into keeping that lion tucked away when in fact, um, everybody wanted to play with the lion. The lion is significant in this case. Um, often the lion is really um, symbolic of feminine energy and in particular feminine leadership. And so here I am 20 plus years later with the experience of the lion and wondering what's holding me back and realizing, oh, there's a little piece of my magic, a piece of my feminine leadership that I tend to hold back or keep tucked away um, because I'm afraid that it might get attacked or I might get hurt or um, you know, it could harm others. And then actually what happened is everybody just wanted to play too. So oftentimes um, when I began my journey with shamanism and in particular with bringing my teachings forward and teaching the shamanic path, um, I found that I, I was hesitant often because I thought that I was supposed to have myths and legends and teachings. And as um, a white American that's non-Indigenous, um, you know, I didn't really know what to do with that because of course I could have access to stories. I could read stories and I might've had stories shared with me from Indigenous teachers. 
And it never really felt right to just retell somebody else's story that isn't necessarily part of my own. And so what we're playing here with is kind of this edge between or this boundary between um, indigenous and non-indigenous teachings and working to sort of mend that separation between the two, right? And so I found myself hesitant often because I didn't feel like I had stories and storytelling is such a powerful way to teach. Um, and then I realized actually I do have stories but they're actually my own stories. And oftentimes we skip over our own stories because we believe we need to have some sort of authority to create or share the teachings. When in reality, actually, um, our own stories are very powerful teachers because they're relatable. And so even though they might not be filled with myths and legends and magic, although sometimes they often are in a subtle way, um, you know, we feel like there isn't something there to share or to teach from. Um, and so as I've been playing with bringing my medicine forward and whether your interest is in, um, you know, practicing shamanism yourself or actually just working at becoming a better healer, you might actually want to play with storytelling. And so one of the best ways to teach is to actually share our own direct experience with moving through a thing or learning to understand a thing. And this makes us authentic storytellers. Instead of searching for other myths and legends that might um, teach something that we wanna teach, we can search our own myths and legends to find these deeper teachings. And in this way, um, you know, in this way, not only do we become more authentic in our leadership and in our storytelling and teaching, but people can easily see how to apply the teachings to their own lives. And also creates a permission field for those people in turn to feel comfortable sharing their own stories. Oftentimes, we can get it to an edge around this work because that starts to feel a little bit vulnerable, especially when it's something that was felt like a mistake story or we were learning something or maybe something embarrassing happened. And, um, you know, this is something that modern society tries to cover up a lot. And as healers, this is one of our jobs is to actually bring this forward, you know, to sweep the dust out from under the rug, to get into those cracks where most of us avoid and bring that forward because this is a part of us. And so whenever we can connect in the fullness of who we are, um, you know, we create deeper connections and we create bigger pathways for us to connect and explore and evolve. When I was young, when I was a kid, I remember what magic felt like. Heck, actually, when I was a teenager, I still remember what magic felt like. I mean, I could feel it running through my body. Um, I didn't know exactly what it was um, or how to explain it, but there was no doubt in my mind what it was, what this energy system was that was running through my body and that I was tuned into. Um, and it's something that I've actually never let go, although maybe I've had moments in my life where I kept it hidden or you know, was in doubt that it meant anything. I always knew what it was there and I could always feel it in my body. And over the years, my life has actually become more and more magical. And so here we are in this particular place of kind of having a uh, part of ourselves in the old paradigm and part of ourselves in the new paradigm. And so we're highly attuned to these old stories that we have and that we carry and um, also aware of where we're going, where we're going with it, right? So, so here we are in this beautiful opportunity to actually be able to um, leave our old story behind or maybe at least let it be a learning. And then we are also in a position to be writing the new story, creating our new book, our new chapters and our new vision for what we're bringing forward into the new earth. And as I sit, as I reminisce with those old feelings of what it's like to have magic running through my body and then meeting my adult self to be experiencing this in my, my external reality, 
um, and becoming more and more magical, I'm starting to realize, you know, as we explore what our purpose is and why we're here, um, you know, I have kind of this ongoing list and dialogue with what that is and that changes and evolves with me too. And I'm starting to realize actually my purpose might be to become as fucking magical as I can possibly be. And so as you um, expand and explore and learn to bring your stories forward to share with others, which is really a gift to be sharing our vulnerability and um, you know, our lessons, I encourage you to you know, take a moment and maybe journal or you know, start to look back and reflect on when the themes and the threads that have run through your life that have constantly been teaching you, because these are chapters from the story that you actually are here to share. And so um, short, sweet message for you all. Um, but thank you for joining me today. And actually the invitation from here is if you have a couple of magical stories or stories that have been big teachers in your life, even if you don't know how it might affect somebody directly now, I encourage you to actually share it in, um, in our Facebook group or on the video here on YouTube. Um, so we can play in each other's stories and experiences and teachings and learn from one another. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you soon.